the good in the world. A few more weeks of this weather. There's no knowing how well you be. Are you comfy now? Yes, ma. I'm all right. How are you feeling? Better, ma, better. If the horrible sinking feeling would go, I'd be all right. Uh, I wouldn't put much pass on that. Your stomach's maybe out of order. Is the poor breathing any better, do you think? Yes. Yes, ma, a lot better. Well, that's something, anyhow. With the help of God, you'll be on the mend from this out. <laughs> do your legs feel any stronger under you, do you think? I can't tell, ma. I think so. A little. Well, a little of self is something. I thought I heard you coughing a little more than usual last night. Do you think you were? I wasn't, ma. I wasn't. Oh, I thought I heard you. But I was kept awake all night with the shooting. And thinking of that madman, Pluther, running about through the night looking for Nora Clitheroe to bring her back when he heard she'd gone to follow her husband. And in dread any minute, he might come staggering in, covered with bandages, splashed all over with the red of his own blood and given us barely time to bring the priest to hear the last whisper of his final confession as his soul was passing through the dark doorway of death into the way of the wandering dead. You don't feel cold, do you? No, ma. I'm all right. Well, keep your chest well covered. That's the delicate spot in you. If there's any danger, we'll whip you in again. Oh, Here's the covey and old Peter hurrying along. God almighty, strange things is happening when them two is woolen together. Were you far up the town? Did you see any sign of Fluter or Nora? How's things looking? I hear they're blazing away out of the GPO. That the Tommies is stretched in heaps around Nelson's pillar and the Parnell statue. And that the paving sets in O'Connell Street is nearly covered by pools of blood. We see no sign of Nora or Fluter anywhere. We should have held her back be main force from going to look for her husband. God knows what's happened to her. I'm always seeing her stretched on her back in some hospital, moaning with the pain of a bullet in her vitals, and nuns trying to get her to take a last look at the crucifix. We can do nothing. You can't stick your nose into O'Connell Street, and Tyler's is on fire. And we've seen the lancers rotting along, heads in the air, spores and sabres jingling, and lances quivering. Looking as if they were asking themselves, where's these blighters till we get a prod at them? Mm -hmm. When there was a volley from the post office that stretched half mm. of them and sent the rest galloping away, wondering how far they'd have to go before they'd feel safe. Damn it, says I to myself, this looks like business. And then out comes General Pierce and his staff, mm. and standing in the middle of the street, he reads the proclamation. What proclamation? The Clarendon, an Irish Republic. Go, so God. The gunboat Helg is shelling Liberty Hall, and I hear the people living on the quays had to crawl on their bellies to mass with the bullets that were flying around from Boland's mills. God bless us, what's going to be the end of it all? Maybe you are satisfied now. Maybe you are satisfied now. Go on and get guns of you, our man. Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. You are all nicely shanghaied now. The boy O hasn't a sword on his tie now. Well, you are all nicely shanghaied now. Don't answer her. She's the right old orange bitch. She's been chanting rule Britannia all morning. Uh, oh, Flutter hasn't met with any accident. He's such a wild card. God grant us. But last night... We dreamt I seen getting carried into the house, a stretcher with a figure lying on it. Stiff and still, dressed in the habit of St. Francis. And then we heard the murmurs of a crowd no one could see, saying the litany for the dead. And then it got so dark that nothing was seen but the white face of the corpse, gleaming like a white water lily floating on the top of a dark lake. Then a tiny whisper trickled into me ear, saying, Isn't the face very like the face of Luther? And then, with a trembling flutter, the dead lips opened. And although I couldn't hear, I knew what they were saying. Poor old Luther. 
After having handed in his gun at last, his shaken soul moored in the place where the wicked are at rest and the weary cease from trouble. Here they are! Oh, God! Here they are! Just got the thorn in the corner! Nora and Flilda! She must be wounded or something, that he seems to be carrying her. Oh, bless us. Is it wounded ya, yeah, Mrs. Clitheroe, or what? Uh, she's all right, Mrs. Scogan. Only worn out from travelling and want to sleep. A night's rest now, and she'll be as fit as a fiddle. Bring her in and make her lie down. Did you hear e'er a whisper of Mr. Clitheroe? I could find him nowhere, Mrs. Scogan. None of them would tell me where he was. They told me I shame my husband and the women of Ireland be carrying on as I was. They said the women must learn to be brave and cease to be cowardly. Me, who risked more for love than they would risk for hate. My Jack will be killed! My Jack will be killed! He is to be butchered as a sacrifice to the dead! You are all nicely shanghaied now! Zara men the losses that have been kissing and cuddling their boys into the shedding of blood! Filling their minds with fairy tales that had no beginning, but, please God, will have a bloody quick end. Turning bitter into sweet, and sweet into bitter. Stabbing in the back the men that are dying in the trenches for them. It's a bad thing for anyone that tries to jilt the Ten Commandments. For judgments are prepared for scorners, and stripes for the back of fools. Rule Britannia, Britannia rules the waves. Britons never, never, never shall. Yeah, ignorant old trollop, ya. Yeah. Oh, safe enough to eat, fine Mrs. Clitheroe. After all, there's a power of women that's handed over sons and husbands to take a run and risk and to fight their wage and... I can't help thinking every shot fired will be fired at Jack. And every shot fired at Jack will be fired at me. What do I care for the others? I can think only of my own self. And there's no woman gives a son or a husband to be killed if they say it. They're lying. Lying against God, nature and against themselves. One blasted hussy at a barricade told me to go home and not be trying to dishearten the men. That I wasn't worthy to bear a son to a man that was out fighting for freedom. I clawed at her and smashed her in the face till we were separated. I was pushed down the street and I cursed them. Cursed the rebel ruffians and volunteers that had dragged me rave and mad into the streets to seek me husband. You'll have to have patience, Flora. We all have to put up with thwarters and tormentors in this world. If they were fighting for anything worthwhile, I wouldn't mind. Nothing derogatory will happen to Mr. Clitheroe. You'll find now, in the finish up, it'll be vice versa. Oh, I know that wherever he is, he's thinking of wanting to be with me. I know he's longing to be passing his hand through me hair, to be caressing me neck, to fondle me hand and to feel me kisses clinging to his mouth. And he stands wherever he is because he's brave? No. But because he's a coward. A coward. <laughs> a coward! Oh, they're not cowards anyway. I tell you, they're afraid to say they're afraid. Oh, I saw it. I saw it, Mrs. Scogan. At the barricade in North King Street, I saw fear glowing in all their eyes. And in the middle of the street was something huddled up in a horrible, tangled heap. His face was jammed against the stones, and his arm was twisted round his back. And every twist of his body was a cry against the terrible thing that had happened to him. And I saw they were afraid to look at him. And some of them laughed at me, but the laugh was a frightened one. And some of them shouted at me, but the shout had in it the shiver of fear. I tell you, they were afraid. Afraid? Afraid! Oh, come on in, dear. If you'd have been a little longer together, the wrench asunder wouldn't have been so sharp. The agony I'm in since he left me has thrust away every rough thing he'd done, and every unkind word he spoke. Only the blossoms that grew out of our lives are before me now, shaking their colours before me face, and breathing their sweet scent on every thought springing up in my mind. Sometimes, Mrs. Cogan. 
Sometimes I think I'm going mad. You'll be a lot better when you have a little lie down. Oh, I don't know what I'd have done. Only for Fluther. I'd have been lying in the streets only for him. They have driven away the little happiness life had to spare for me. He has gone from me forever. Forever! Which of you has the tossers? I have. You and your leaders and their sham battle soldiers has landed the body in a nice way. Having to go and ferret out a bit of bread, God knows where. Why aren't you in the GPO if you's our men? It's paler and paler you's are getting. A lot of vipers! That's what the Irish people is! Never mind, her. Make a start and keep us from the sin of idleness. <laughs> well, how are you today, Mal's our old son? What's that you're drinking? Milk? Grand food. Grand thanks. Yes, milk. You couldn't get a better thing down you. This torn up has done one good thing anyhow. You can't get a drink anywhere, and if it lasts a week, I'll be so used to it that I won't think of a point. <laughs> What's the button? Heads of juice. Herbs and tanner. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the boom of a big gun. Surely be to God they're not going to use artillery on us. Not going? Wouldn't they use anything on us, man? Ah, oh, holy Christ, that's not playing the game. What would happen if a shell landed here now? You'd be off to heaven in a fiery chariot. In spite of all the warnings that's ringing around us, are you going to start your picking at me again? Go on, toss him again, toss him again. Harps a tanner. Heads of juice. Let them roll, let them roll. <laughs> Heads be God. They're breaking into the shops. They're breaking into the shops. Smashing the windows. Battering in the doors and whipping away everything. And the volunteers is firing on them. I seen two men and a lassie pushing a piano down the street. And a sweat rolling off them, trying to get it up on the pavement. And an old one that must have been 70, looking as if she'd drop every minute with the dint of her beating. Trying to pull a big double bed out of a broken shop window. I was gonna wait till I dressed myself from the skin out. Help me in, Bessie. I'm feeling curious. <coughs> the selfishness of that one. She waited till she got all she could carry before she come to tell anyone. Hey, Bessie, did you hear them here in the pub getting a shake-up? I didn't hear them all. Well, you're going to hear the one soon. Come on, man, don't be wasting time. Hey, hey, are you going to leave me here? Are you going to leave yourself here? Didn't you just hear her saying they were firing on them? Well, well I suppose the night was parted. Uh, we give you a Christian burial, any you? <laughs> dressed up in your regimentals. May the all-loving God give you a hot knock one of these days, me young Kofi. Tutor and flute are up now to be tilting at me and crossing me with his mockeries and jiving. For God's sake, will one of you kind men show any safe way for me to get to Rathmines? I was foolish enough to visit a friend, thinking the whole thing was a joke. And now I can't get a car or a tram to take me home. Isn't it awful? Uh, I'm afraid, ma'am, one way uh, is as safe as another. Then what am I going to do? Oh, isn't this awful? Oh, it's so different from others. The moment I hear a shot, my legs give way under me. Oh, I can't stir. I'm paralyzed. Isn't it awful? Uh, it's a derogatory way to be right enough, ma'am. Creeping along the street there, with my head down, my eyes half shut. A bullet whizzed past within an inch of my nose. I had to lean against the wall for a long time, gasping for breath. I nearly passed away. It was awful. I wonder... Would you kind men come some of the way and see me safe? I have to go away, ma'am, to try to save a few things from the born and built. Come on, then, there won't be anything left to save. Wasn't it an awful thing for me to leave my friend's house? Wasn't it an idiotic thing to do? I haven't the slightest idea where I am. You have a kind face, sir. Could you possibly come and pilot me in the direction of Rathmines? Do you think I'm going to risk my life trotting in front of you? Hmm? And maybe get a bullet that would give me a gammy leg or something that would leave me a jive and a jeer to flute or in the young Kobe for the rest of me days, huh? I know I'll fall down in a dead faint if I hear another shot go off anywhere near me. Isn't it awful? 
Hello! Where are you going with that? How quick you poor me lady to clap your eyes on the pram? Maybe you don't know that Mrs. Sullivan, before she went to spend Easter with her people in Dunbyan, gave me strict injunctions to give an occasion a look to see if it was still standing where it was left in the corner of the lobby? That remark of yours, Mrs. Bessie Borges, <coughs> requires a little consideration, seeing that the pram was left on our lobby and not on yours. A foot or two a little to the left of the jam of my own room door. Nor is it needful <coughs> to mention the name of the person that gave a squint to see if it was there the first thing in the morning and the last thing in the stillness of the night. Never failing to realise that her eyes couldn't be going wrong, be stretching out her arm and running her hand over the pram to make sure that the sight was no deception. Moreover, something's telling me that the running hurry of an interest you're taking in it now is a sudden ambition to use the pram for a purpose that a loyal woman of law and order would stagger away from. There's not as much as one body in the house that doesn't know that it wasn't Bessie Borges that was always shaking her voice complaining about people leaving bassinets in the way of them that, week in and week out, had to pay their rent and always had to find a regular accommodation for her own furniture in her own room. And as for law and order, putting aside the harp and shamrock, Bissy Borges will have as much respect as she wants for the lion and unicorn. I think I'll go with a pair of yous and see the fun. A fella might as well chance it, anyhow. Take your roving lumps of hands from patting the bassinet, if you please, ma'am. And stepping from the threshold of good manners, let me tell you, Mrs. Borges, that it's a fat wonder to Jenny Gogan. That a lady like singer of hymns like yourself would lower her thoughts from sky thinking to stretch out her arm in a sly seeking way to pinch anything driven astray in the confusion of the battle our boys is making for the freedom of their country. <laughs> I'll go with a pair of yous and give you a hand. Get up in the perambulator and we wheel you down. Poverty and hardship has sent Bessie Borges to abide with strange company, but she always knew them she had to live with from backside to breakfast time. And she can tell them, always having had a Christian kinch on our conscience, that a passion for thieving and pinching would find her soul a foreign place to live in, and that her present intention is quite the lofty-hearted one of picking up anything, shaking up and scattered about in the loose confusion of a general blunder. Ah. <laughs> oh. God almighty, that's the big gun again. Oh, God forbid any harm would come to them. But so of mind, I'd mind if they met with a drop in their mad and devries to plunder and destroy. Who shut the door? Come on and open it, will you? This is not my time, but I got me back. No, the young Covey. Do you think I'm gonna be your lackey? Eh? Ah, will you open the door, you? Don't be asking me to open any door. Don't be asking me to open any door for you. Making a shame and a sin of the cause that good men are fighting for. Oh, God, forgive the people that, instead of burnishing the work the boys is doing today with quiet honesty and patience, is reviling their sacrifices with a right of looting and roguery. Uh, isn't it your own eyes leaping out of your head with envy that you haven't the guts to catch a few of the things that God has given to his chosen people? You old hypocrite! If everyone was blind, you'd steal a cross off an ass's back. You're not going to make me lose me temper. You can go on with your prodding as long as you like. Gold and gold and gold away. <laughs> I'll not lose me temper. <laughs> you mean, long, lanky laid of a lousy bastard. Lousy bastard. Lousy bastard. I don't remember ever having seen such lovely pairs as them. With the pointed toes and the Cuban heels. Oh, they go grand with the dresses we're after lifting. When we stitch a stray bit of silk to lift the bodices oh. up a little bit higher. So oh. as to shake the shame out of them. And make them fit for women that hasn't lost themselves in the nakedness of the time. <laughs> hey, you. 
Malza looks as if she was going to faint, oh. and your youngster is roaring convulsions in her lap. Oh, she's never any other way but fainting. Oh. Ay, 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 you cowardly old fool. Why are you trying to shut the door on us for? Why did you fire over their heads? Why didn't you fight to kill? No, no, Bill. Bad as they are, they're Irish men and women. Irish be damned. Attacking a mob and the men that are risking their lives for them. If these slum lice gathered at our heels again, plug one of them, or I'll soon shock them with a shot or two myself. Oh my God, is there any ambulance knocking around anywhere? The storm is ready for me. I feel it, oh Christ. Keep the hairs up, Jim. We'll soon get help now. Jack? Jack? Oh, God, be thanked. Be thanked. Been kind and merciful to his poor handmaid. Oh, my Jack, my own Jack that I thought was lost is found, that I thought was dead is alive again. Oh, God be praised forever, evermore. Oh, my poor Jack, kiss me, kiss me, Jack, Nora. kiss your own Nora. My Nora. Mm. My little, beautiful Nora. I wish to God I'd never left you. It doesn't matter. Not now. Not now, Jack. It will make us dearer than ever to each other. Kiss me. Oh. Kiss me again. Now, for God's sake, Nora, don't make a scene. I won't. I won't. I promise. I promise, Jack. Honest to God, I'll be silent and brave and bear the joy of feeling you safe in my arms again. <laughs> Oh, it's hard to force away the tears of happiness at the end of an awful agony. The minstrel boys aren't feeling very comfortable now. The big guns has knocked all the herbs out of their hands. General Clither would rather be unlacing his wife's bodice than standing at a barricade. And the professor of chicken butchering there uh. finds he's up against something a little tougher even than his own chickens, and that's saying a lot. Yo, shut up, you old hag! Choke the chicken, choke the chicken, choke the chicken! <laughs> oh, for God's sake, Bill, bring me some place where my wound will be looked after. I'm going to die before everything's done to save me. <sighs> Come on, Jack. We've got to get help for Jim here. Have you no thought for his pain and danger? Choke the chicken, choke the chicken, choke the chicken. Oh, loosen me, darling. Let me go. No, no, no I'll not let you go. Come on. Come on up to our home, Jack. My sweetheart, my lover, my husband. And we'll forget the last few terrible days. I look tired now, but a few hours of happy rest in your arms will bring back the bloom of freshness again. <laughs> and you will be glad. You will be glad. 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 No, oh, if only I'd come down a little longer, I might not have been his. Everyone else escaping and me getting me ready with the sunder. I couldn't scream. I couldn't even scream. Do you think I'm really badly wounded, Bill? Yeah. Look at my clothes. I think they're all soaking wet. It's, it's blood. Oh, my God. I must be my own blood. Go on, Jack. Bill will go by with another kiss and be done with it. Do you want Langham to die in my arms while you're dallying with your Nora? I must go. I must go, Nora. I'm sorry we met at all. It couldn't be helped. All other ways were blocked by the British. Ah, oh, let me go, can't you, Nora? Do you want me to be untrue to me comrades? No, I won't let you go. I want you to be true to me, Jack. I'm your dearest comrade. I'm your truest comrade. They only want the comfort of having you in the same danger as themselves. Oh, Jack, I can't let you go. You must, Nora. You must. Oh, last night at the barricades, I sought you, Jack. I didn't think of the danger. I could only think of you. I asked for you everywhere. Some of them laughed. I was pushed away, but I shoved back. Some of them even struck me. And I screamed and screamed your name. Oh. What possessed you to make a show of yourself like that? What way do you think I'll feel when I'm told my wife was bawling for me at the barricades? Oh, what are you more than any other woman? No more, maybe. But you are more to me than any other man, Jack. I didn't mean any harm, honestly, Jack. I couldn't help it. 
I shouldn't have told you. My love for you made me mad with terror. They'll say now that I sent you out. The way I'd have an excuse to bring you home. Are you going to turn all the risks I'm taking into a laugh? Let me lie down. Let me lie down, Bill. It's going to be easier than maybe lying down. Oh, God have mercy on me. A few steps more, Jim. A few steps more. I try to stick it for a few steps more. Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. Are you coming, man? Or are you going to make an arrangement for another honeymoon? If you want to act a renegade, then say so and we'll be off. Run from the dummies. Choke the chicken. Yeah. Run in front of the dummy. Choke the chicken. Damn you, man. Who wants to act the renegade? Here. Let go your hold, Nora. Let go, I say. Look, Jack. Look at the anger in his face. Look at the fear glinting in his eyes. He himself afraid. 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 He wants you to go the way he'll have the chance of death striking you and missing him. Turn round and look at him, Jack. Look at him. Look at him. His very soul is cold, shivering with the thought of what may happen to him. It is his fear that's trying to frighten you from recognising the same fear that is in your own heart. Oh, damn you, woman, will you let me go? Why are you begging her to let you go? Are you afraid of her or what? Break her hold on you, man, or go up and sit on her lap. Oh, Jack. 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 Oh, Brennan. Run in a priest, I'm dying. I think I'm dying. If you won't do it quietly, I'll have to make you. Here, hold this gun, you, for a minute. Please, Jack. You're hurting me, Jack. Honestly. Oh, you're hurting me. I won't. I won't. I won't. Oh, Jack, I gave you everything you asked of me. Don't fling me from you now. Oh, Jack. 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 Come on. Come on! Come on in, Nora. There's the cooker. Something, some of yous, one of yous, one of yous, before I lay one of yous out. Bang and fire away for all flew to cast. Come down and open the door. Some of yous, one of yous, one of yous, before I lay some of yous out. Oh, said he can topple home to hell for flew to. Uh. That nobody can deny. That nobody can deny. Well, blue does a Johnny Gavella. Blue does a Johnny Gavella. Blue does a Johnny Gavella. Up the rivers. That nobody can deny. Blast you, Blue. Don't be spilling the precious liquor. Hey! Give us a mug or a jug or something, one of you, some of you, as well as before I lay one of you out. Uh. Bowsy, mm. come in, Arada. Uh. I'll trim your tricks and drunk and dancing for you. And none of us know how soon we'll bump into a world we were never in before. Hey, the chair, the chair, the chair. Luther would go. Only he's too drunk. Oh, God, isn't it a pity he's so drunk? We'd have to try to get a doctor somewhere. Oh, he'd be afraid to go. Beside, Mulls are terrible bad. I don't think you'd get a doctor to come. It's hardly any use going. Oh, I'll risk it. Give her a little of Luther's whiskey. It's the fright that's brought it on her so soon. Go, go on back to her. You... Be thou my help in time of trouble. 
and shelter me safely in the shadow of thy wings. See you, you'll only bring a nose in the house. Yes, and he knows we had to leave our own place the way they were written up with machine gun fire. He'll keep on pimping and pimping there till we have to fly out of this place too. If they make any attack here, we'll send you out in your green and glory <laughs> uniform, shaking your sword over your head and they'll fly before you as the Thames <laughs> flew before Brian Baru. <laughs> Come on and cut. That time. But three hearts. Three hearts. Three hearts. It's time to hide lines to think of our dead born kitty lying there in the arms of poor little Malza. Malza snuffed it sudden too, after all. Ah, sure, she never got any care. How could she get it? The mother out day and night looking for work. And her consumptive husband leaving her with a baby to be born before he died. Your deal, Flutter. It's like a lot out of Nora. But she'll never be the same. The doctor thinks she'll never be the same. Thinks she'll be a little touched here. She's rambling a lot, thinking she's out in the country with Jack. Or getting his dinner ready for him before he comes home. Or yelling for her kitty. All that done would be the chloroform she got. I don't know what we'd have done, only for old Bessie. Up with her for the past three nights, hand running. I always knew there was never anything really derogatory wrong with poor old Bessie. <coughs> hey, hold on there. Don't be so damn quick. That's my trick. What's your trick? It's my trick, man. How is it your trick? Didn't I lead the juice? You must be getting blind, man. Oh, Don't just... you see the ace? You want to waken her again on me when she's just gone to sleep? If she wakes, will you come and mind her? If I hear a whisper out of one of you again, I... Gorgeous. Above a whisper. The gentle and merciful God will give the Perrias a scalding and a scared of fire in one of these days. <sighs> no, don't you spread that out, man. Try and keep us up for tomorrow. Spread it out? Keep us up for tomorrow? How in the hell does a fella know there'll be any tomorrow? If I'm going to be whipped away, let me be whipped away when it's empty <laughs> and not when it's half full. <laughs> How is she now, Bessie? I left her sleeping quietly. When I'm listening to her babbling, I think she'll never be much better than she is. Her eyes have a haunting way of looking in, instead of looking out. As if her mind had been lost alive in madly mingling memories of the past. Crushing her thoughts together in a fierce and fanciful idea that Dead things are living, and living things are dead. Was that a scream I heard her give? Oh, bless God. I think I hear her screaming every minute, and it's only there with me that I'm able to keep awake. She sleep maybe for a long time now. Tender, turn here. If she gets a long sleep, she might be all right. Hey, there's the loud vibe. <laughs> Shh. I think I hear somebody moving below. Whoever it is, he's coming up. Mrs. Clitheroe. Where is Mrs. Clitheroe? I was told I'd find her here. What do you want with Mrs. Clitheroe? A message. A last message from her husband. Killed? He's not killed, is he? 
the Imperial Hotel. We fought till the place was in flames. He was shot through the arm and then through the lung. I could do nothing for him. Only watch his breath coming and going in quick jerky gasps and a tiny stream of blood trickling out of his mouth and down over his lower lip. I said a prayer for the dying and twined his rosary beads around his fingers. And then I had to leave him to save myself. Well, well look, look at the way the machine gun tore me coat as I belted out of the building and darted across the street for shelter. And then I seen the plough and the stairs falling like a shot as the roof crashed down. And where I left poor Jack was nothing but a leopard spout of flame. No, I, you, you left him? You twined his rosary beads round his fingers and then you run like a hare to get out of danger. I took me chance as well as him. He took it like a man. His last whisper was to tell Nora to be brave and that I'm ready to meet me God and that I'm proud to die for Ireland. And when our general heard it, he said that Commandant Clitheroe's end was a gleam of glory. Mrs. Clitheroe's grief would be a joy when she realises that she had a hero for a husband. If you only seen her, you'd know to the differ. Not there, Jack. I can feel comfortable only in our own familiar place beneath the bramble tree. We must be walking for a long time. I feel very... Very tired. Are we to go further? Or have we passed it by? <sighs> Curious mist on my eyes. Why don't you hold my hand, Jack? No, no, Jack, it's not. Can't you see? It's a goldfinch. Look at the black satiny wings with the gold bars and the splash of crimson on its head. Something ails me. And something ails me. Don't kiss me like that. You take my breath away, Jack. Why do you frown at me? You're going away and I can't follow you. Something's keeping me from moving. Jack. Jack. Jack! No, Mrs. Clitheroe. You're a terrible woman to get up out of bed. You'll get cold if you stay here in them clothes. Cold? I'm feeling very cold. Oh, it's chilly out here in the country. What place is this? Where am I? You're all right, Nora. You're with friends. And in a safe place. D don't you know your uncle? And, and your cousin? And poor old flute there. Uh, Nora, darling. Now, now, leave it to Bessie, man. A crowd will only make a war. There is something I want to remember, and I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Oh, oh my head. Oh, my head. Where is it? Where's my baby? Tell me where you put it. Where have you hidden it? My baby. My baby. I Thank God, this isn't this beautiful. I won't go away for you, I won't. Not till you give me back my husband. Murderers! That's what you said, murderers! Murderers! We'll bring Mr. Clitheroe back to you. If you'll only lie down and stop quiet. Come on, now, Nora. And I'll sing something to you. I feel as if my life was trying to force its way out of my body. I can hardly breathe. I am frightened. I'm frightened. I'm frightened. For God's sake, don't leave me, Bessie. Hold my hand. Oh, put your arms around me. You no, know, you can see the way she is, man. And what way would she be if she heard Jack had gone west? Shut up, you man. We'll have to be brave and let patience clip away the heaviness of the slow-moving hours. 
remembering that sorrow may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Come on in, and I'll sing to you, and you'll rest quietly. Jack and me are going out somewhere this evening. Where, I can't tell. Isn't it curious? I can't remember. Moira. Moira, Jack. If the baby's a girl. Any name you'd like if the baby's a boy. He's there. He's there! And they won't give him back to me! Darling, shh! I won't sing to you if you're not quiet. Hold my hand. Hold my hand and, and, and sing to me. Sing to me. Come in and lie down and I'll sing to you. Sing to me. Sing to me. Sing, sing. Lead kindly light amidst encircling gloom. Lead thou me on. The night is dark and I am far from home. Lead thou me on. Keep thou my feet. I do not ask to see the distant sea. One step enough for me. So long that thou hast blessed me, sure thou still wilt lead me on. Oh, more and fair, oh, glad and far and Now that you've seen how bad she is, and that we daren't tell her what has happened till she's better, you best be slipping back to where you come from. There's no chance of slipping back now. For the military are everywhere. If Lloyd couldn't get through, I'd never have got here, only I managed to change my uniform from what I'm wearing. Oh, no, I'll have to take my chance and try to lie low here for a while. <laughs> There's no place here to lie low. The Tommies will be hopping in here any minute. And then we'll all be shanghaied. Be God, there's enough after having it to wish. Wish, glorious. I think I heard the clang of a rifle button the floor of the hall below. Here, come up with the guards again. <coughs> what a deal. Plugs up. Try to keep your hands from shaking, man. You late, Peter. Four of hearts, man. Two tens and a five. Hello. Is this stiff? Yes. Who's going with it? Only one allowed to go with it, you know. I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. She's after slipping off to sleep again. Thanks be to God. I'm hardly able to keep my own eyes open. Oh, are you going to take away poor little Malza? Hey, who's you going with her? Oh, the poor mother, of course. God help her. It's a terrible blow to her. A terrible blow. She's in her element now, woman. Mixing air to air and ashes to ashes and dust to dust and reveling in plumes and hearses, last days and judgments. Oh, God bless us. I'm jaded. Was she plugged? No, no. Died of consumption. Oh, so I thought she might have been plugged. Is that all? Isn't it enough? Do you know, comrade, that more die of consumption than are killed in the wars? And it's all because of the system we're living under. Oh, I well, know. I'm a socialist myself. But I have to do my duty. <laughs> duty? The only duty of a socialist is the emancipation of the workers. Oh, a man's a man, and he has to fight for his country, hasn't he? You're not fighting for your country here, are you? Hey, hey, feel the, none of that. None of that. Fight for your country. Did you ever read, comrade, Janerski's thesis on the origin, development and consolidation of the evolutionary idea oh, of the proletariat? Oh, cheesy, Paddy, cheesy. 
I was things in the town, Tommy. Oh. oh, I think it's nearly over. We got him surrounded, and we're closing in on the blighters. Oh, it was only a bit of a dog fight. Christ, that's another of our men hit by that blasted sniper. He's knocking about here somewhere. Good, when we get a blighter, we'll give him the cold steel, we will. We'll jab the belly out of him, we will. We'll never forget what you've done for me, Fluther. Going around at the risk of your life, settling everything with the Undertaker and the cemetery people. When all me home were afraid to put their noses out, you plunged like a good one through the humming bullets, and they knocking fire out of the road, tinkling through the frightened windows, splashing themselves to pieces on the walls. And you find that Malzer, in the happy place she's gone to, won't forget to whisper now and again the name of Fluther. Get it out, Mother. Get the coffin out. <laughs> it's excusing me you'll be, Mrs. Scogan, for not standing up, seeing as I'm shaky on me feet for want of to sleep, and not desiring to show any disrespect to poor little Walsa. Do we all know, Bessie, that it's vice versa with you? Indeed. It's myself that has well chronicled, Mrs. Borges, all your gentle hurryings to me little Malzer when she was alive, bringing her something to drink or something to eat, never passing her without lifting up her hair with a delicate word of kindness. Get it out. Get it out, Mother. One, two, three. <coughs> How many men is in this here house? How many men is in this here house? God, I was nearly asleep. How many men? Didn't you see them? Well, I all that are in the house. There's none higher up, but there may be more lower down. Why? All men in district has to be rounded up. Somebody's giving help to the snipers, and we have to take precautions. If I had my way, I'd make them all join up and do their bit. But I suppose they and you are all shinners. Bessie Borges is no shinner. And never had no trouble with anything spotted be the fingers of the Fenians. But always made it her business to harness herself for church whenever she knew that God Save the King was going to be sung at the end of the service whose only son went to the front in the first contingent of the Dublin Fusiliers. And that's on his way home, carrying a shattered arm that he got fighting for his king and country. There in the street outside, shaking with the fire and the rifles and machine guns. Must be a hot shop in the middle of the scrap. We're pumping lead in them from every side now. They'll soon be shoving up the white flag. I'm telling you, either yous, two losers, would make a better horseman than Peter. Prodding and poking at me and I helping to carry out a corpse. It wasn't a very derogatory thing for the Covey to say that you'd make a fancy <laughs> horse man, was it? A pair <laughs> of red jester bowsies pondering from morning till night on how they'll get a chance to break a gap through the quiet nature of a man that's always endeavouring to chase out of him any stray thought of venom against his fellow man. I should have just, should have, as long as I'm a living man responsible for me thought, words and deeds to the man above, I'll feel myself instituted to fight against the slithering ways of a pair of pickaroons, whispering, concorring, concocting and conspiring together to render me unconscious of the life I'm trying to live. What's wrong, Daddy? What I done to you? You mind your own business. What's it got to do with you? What's wrong with me? Yes, try to control yourselves into quietness. He's awakening her up on the 
The man buys to the cards again. And never mind him. No use of so you going to start cards. You'll be going out of here as soon as the sergeant comes. Going out of here? Why are we going out of here? All men in district to be rounded up and held in till the scrap is over. And where are we going to be held in? We'll have put him in a church. A church? What sort of a church? Is it a Protestant church? I don't know, I suppose so. <laughs> They got to be nice thing to be stuck all night in a Protestant church. Bring the cards, you might get a chance of a game. Ah, no, that wouldn't do. I wonder. Ah, I don't think we'd be doing anything derogatory be playing cards in a Protestant church. If I was you, I'll bring a little snack with me. You might be glad of it before the morning. Oh, I do like a nice mince pie. Oh, I do like a nice mince pie. <laughs> what was it? One of our men, it's Sergeant. Private Taylor. Got it right through the chest, he did. And all in front of him is how you could put your fist through. And half his back blown away. Dumb, dumb bullets are using. Gang of assassins potting at us from behind roofs. That's not playing a game. Why don't they come down into the open and fight fair? Yeah. Fight fair? A few hundred scrolls of chaps with a couple of guns and rosary beads again. A hundred thousand trained men with horse, foot and artillery. And he wants us to fight fair. Do you want us to come out in our skins and throw stones? Are these four all that are here? Oh, that's all, Sergeant. Come on in. Get the blighters out. There. Hop it out. Out and in the streets with you. And if a sniper sends another of our men west, you go with him. Go on, get out. Hey, who are you chucking, eh? Go on, get out, you blighter. Who are you calling a blighter to, eh? I'm a Dublin man, born and bred in the city, see? I don't care if you were Brian Baru. Get out. Get out. Jesus, you and your guns. Lay them down and I'd bait the two of yous without sweating. Yeah. Imagine the room looks very hot somewhere. It's nearly forgetting Jack's tea. I think I'll have everything done before he gets in. The violets were sent in the woods. Nora displaying their charms to the bee. When I first said I loved only you, Nora, and you said you loved only me. The chestnut blooms gleam through the glade, Nora, a robin sang loud from a tree. When I first said I loved only you, Nora, and you said you loved only me. Can't help feeling this room very strange. What is it? What is it? I must think. I must try to remember. Trees, birds, and bees sang a song. Nora, of happier transports to be. When I first said I loved only you, Nora, and you said you loved only me. My baby, my baby, my baby. Devil, how are you after getting us out of bed again? Jack! Jack! 
For God's sake! Come to me! Get away! Get away from that window there! Come away. Come away, woman. From that window. Where is it? Where have you hit me? Oh, Jack. Jack! Where are Please you? Slit the road, for God's sake. Come away. No, he won't. He's below. Let me go. You're trying to keep me from your husband. I'll follow him. Jack! Jack! Come to your Nora! Hush, Nora. Nora! He'll be here in a minute. I'll bring him to you. He can only be quiet. Honest to God, I will. <laughs> Life's pouring out of me. I've got this through. Through you. Through you, you bitch. Look up. Have mercy on me. You wouldn't stop quiet. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't, Pastor. There's no one here to stop the flowing blood. Mrs. Gogan! Mrs. Gogan! Fluda! Fluda! Oh, for God's sake, somebody! A doctor! A doctor! Jack, I'm frightened. I'm frightened, Jack. Oh, Jack. This is what's after coming on me for nursing you day and night. <laughs> I was a fool. A fool. A fool. Get me a drink of water, you jade, will you? There's a fire burning in me blood. Nora. Nora. Dear. For God's sake. Run out and get Mrs. Gogan. Or Fluter, or somebody to bring a doctor. Quick, quick, quick. Plus, just stare yourself before I'm gone. Oh, Jack. Jack. Where are you? Oh, Jesus Christ. Me sight's gone. It's all dark. Nora, hold me hand. I'm dying. I'm dying. I feel it. Oh, God. Oh, God. I do believe. I will believe that Jesus died for me, that on the cross he shed his blood from sin to set me free. I do believe. I will believe Jesus died me because she didn't see. Child, what's wrong? Bessie. Bessie. Mrs. Borges. Mrs. Borges. My God. She's as cold as death. 
her after murdering the poor inoffensive woman. This is the house. That's the window. Hide it. Hide it. Cover it up. Cover it up. Yeah. What's this? Who's this? Oh, God. Oh, we plugged one of the women at the house. What the hell did she go with the window? She did. Oh, dead as be damned. Well, we couldn't afford to take any chances. Hide it. Hide it. Don't let me see it. Take me away. Take me away, Mrs. Golden. Oh, God help her. That poor woman. She's stiffening out as hard as she can. Oh, her face has written on it the shock of sudden agony. Her hands is whitening into the smooth shininess of wax. Take me away. Take me away. Don't leave me here to be looking and looking at it. Come on with me, dear. And you can doss in poor Malzer's bed till we gather some neighbours to come and give their last friendly touches to Bessie in the lonely laying of her out. See here, Sergeant. What about a cup of scold? Pour it out, stud. I'll pour it out. I will scoff anything just now. There goes the general attack on the post office. In The Plough and the Stars by Sean O'Casey, Nora was played by Elaine Cassidy and Jack by Porig Delaney. Fluter was played by Finbar Lynch, Bessie by Gabrielle Reedy, Mrs Gogan by Fiona Clark, Peter by Stephen Hogan and The Covey by Jonathan Forbes. Mulzer was Rebecca Gleeson, Captain Brennan, Matthew McNulty, Lieutenant Langan, Sam Smith, Rosie, Jane McGrath and the barman, Martin A. Cousins. The musical director was Conrad Nelson. The Plow on the Stars was directed by Nadia Molinari. Nadia Molinari. Nadia Molinari. Nadia Molinari. Nadia Molinari. Nadia Molinari. Nadia Molinari.